about two years ago, I went back to school, mm-hmm. like a career change or whatever, and yep, I needed yep. like an outlet. Mm-hmm. Um, and I just pushed myself. Like I throw the shades on, mm-hmm. <laughs> and I had a lot of people in my corner, like my friend Charles, Kiera, yep. Tiffany, Jazz, like just pushing me, saying you can do it. Mm-hmm. Like you got this gift. You need to go out there and just. You know what I'm saying? Like, let everybody hear these words. And honestly, it was like therapy for me. Like, open mics were therapy for me. Right, right. So, like, when I went up there, I'm like, yeah, this is home. Like, on the mic, this is home. Are you ready? For sure. Hello, everybody. I just want to. We're going to start this off with some fried shit, though. I got a question for you. Oh, you going live? Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Would you rather be a snail or an octopus? Wait. <laughs> <laughs> uh, definitely not a snail because they move too slow for me, and I'm like a fast paced person. So true. You know. So you rather be an octopus? <laughs> yeah, that's be, the only two. <laughs> we rather be like the the little octopuses or the big ones or those squids. Are squids and octopuses the same thing? Uh. I'm not really sure. Like, they probably in the same kind of family. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. 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 So, but yeah, I'll be, I'll be active for sure. Okay, for sure. For and plus, sure. like, with the multiple arms, you can multitask. And I'm always that's got my true. hand in a lot of things. So, you know. Hey, that, hey, <laughs> hey, that's well said. I fuck with that. I fuck with that. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to the Lavish Journey Podcast. It's your host, Jay Gaines, and here today. We got a special guest over here. We got the lady poet. <laughs> what up? Did I pronounce it right? You Am did. I good? Am I good? <laughs> I know the three throws everybody y'all. It does. I was like, okay, this is different way I pronounce it. Yeah, it's meaningful to me though. Like yeah. the number three is meaningful to me, so I put it in the poet. Okay, That's why. that your favorite number? Uh, it's one of them for mm-hmm. sure. But like the three basically means like three loves in your life oh, that dope. you get. You know what I mean? So. Dope. Like, the first one you get in high school is, like, your first love. It's, like, that love you don't really get over. Mm-hmm. Uh, the second one kind of teaches you a little more mm-hmm. than the first one. Uh, and then the third one kind of catches you by the surprise, and it's the one that you end up with for the rest of your life. Wow. You know, yeah. I heard somebody tell me that, too, a long <clears throat> time ago. I, I guess that, that's true. That's yeah. true. So let everybody know about you, you know, what you're doing, everything, and the whole biography. <laughs> oh, my whole biography. <laughs> the whole biography. You want me to go. start when I was born? Go for it. <laughs> Wherever you want to let them know. I ain't going to give them my age out here or nothing like that. But um, I go by the pen name Lady Poet. Uh, My real first name is Tiara. Uh, I've been writing literally since I was 10 years old. And I know that's like an early age to like write poetry. Mm -hmm. But like um, my best friend, we would start off like creative writing with like stories and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And um, I just started dabbling into poetry like I kind of had like a rough upbringing as far as like getting along with people and like being bullied and stuff like that. So like <clears throat> poetry was always something that like uh, helped me express myself. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. So yeah, from 10 years old, I did that. And um, it just always stuck with me. I worked on a book um, during high school. Mm-hmm. Took me longer than it should, but... You know how high school is, yeah, like yeah, I'm already hip. <laughs> you know, you you yeah. trying to get in with the in crowd. I was playing sports and mm-hmm. I was working. I was doing a lot, taking care of my sister. So um, that book took me a long time to make. Uh, that came out about 2010. Uh, a writer's ambition. That was my first uh, published, self published book. Oh, really? Yeah, oh, I should have actually dope. bought you yeah, a copy. I'm slipping, like <laughs> you know, hey, stick to me, y'all. <laughs> I'm so. slipping. I'm going to definitely get you one of those. But, um, yeah, that was my first uh, self-published book. It did pretty good. It could have probably did better if I put a lot more promo into it. Mm-hmm. Um, but more recently, people have been hitting me up for them because I started mm-hmm. performing um, just a little over a year ago. Okay. Like, I started performing my poetry. And um, that's been a ride. Like, mm-hmm. <laughs> it literally started off me going to open mics at the Temple of Passion. Shout out to my people. Um and from there, like, they just gave me the confidence to, like, go and do more and perform. Right, right. And um, and open up to crowds. But, um, yeah. That's dope. It's, it's been a journey, man. Yeah. <laughs> I got a few questions already. So, for this book, you said, I don't know shit about writing books and anything. <laughs> so, when you self-published it, I mean, you pretty much, you wrote it all on your own? You did everything on your own? Yeah, or? I did everything on my own. I found a person to illustrate the cover. Mm-hmm. Um I got the copyrights and everything mm-hmm. and um, uploaded it to this site 
I won't shout them out because they ain't paying me or nothing like that. Oh, but um, if you want to know, yeah. I'll tell you in oh, private. For sure. Um, <laughs> but um, yeah, it was real easy, to be honest. Word. Yeah. How long did it take you to make it? Uh, To like actually upload it and get everything. To get everything, yeah. Start from, from finish, honestly. Mm. So it took me forever to write the book. Like I said, it took me all during high school. So that was a good like solid four or five years. And yeah. plus I was going through like losing my grandmother and stuff like that. Right, so right, like right. a lot of emotional things held me back from like publishing it. And mm-hmm. it's just like my anxiety about people reading my inner thoughts. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, that took me about four to five years. And then like the person illustrating the cover, he drew that out like quick and mm-hmm. like easy. And like I, I just gave him like the concept in my mind. And he was like, this is what I got. And I was, I was happy with it. Everybody that's think that's me on the cover, but it's not me. <laughs> I got to see <laughs> like, this book. That's dope. Yeah, it looked it look just like me. I'm going to have to, um, if you want, you if you want to pull it up. Yeah, on your, yeah, yeah. Um, oh, y'all, we got to check this out. My on the phone. You can look, isn't on here. Well, <clears throat> I'm going uh, to go ahead and go to the website. You know, you got an Apple dope. phone and I'm, oh. Okay, oh, you don't got, oh, you're not an Apple <laughs> phone user. <laughs> no, <Nah, laughs> yeah. I'm that Samsung life. Oh, you got you got to you got to get on team iPhone. Mm-mm. <laughs> I, I started out with an iPhone for real, and then iPhone played me, so I I, went, I switched over a long time ago. Well, iPhone looks like you fucked up. <laughs> you fucked up with a customer right there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I definitely got to see this this book cover. That's dope. Cause I always said I wanted to you know write a book, but yeah, that's I, it right there. <clears throat> oh, that's dope. Huh? <laughs> yeah, everybody think that's me on the cover, but it's mm-hmm. not. Like I'm like. It's literally supposed to be somebody like sitting at a desk, but I guess you can say it's me. A writer's <laughs> ambition. Yeah. Hey, y'all, if y'all hear this? Go check it out. A writer's ambition. Just go Google it. Yeah, like or Tierra just Jones. you know, follow me on Instagram and mm-hmm. Lady stuff. Poet L A D E E P O three T, and uh, hit me up in my inbox. That's dope. I respect that. Yeah. So how how do you come about? Because I know it's really hard, like you said, to really put your feelings out there to the world and to the public. Yes. How do you <laughs> break through that, honestly? Because I personally still do to this day have a problem doing that. Yeah. So um, about two years ago, I went back to school, mm-hmm. like a career change or whatever, and dope, I needed dope. like an outlet. Mm-hmm. Um. And I just push myself like I throw the shades on mm-hmm. <laughs> and I had a lot of people in my corner, like my friend Charles, Kiera, yep. Tiffany, Jazz, like just pushing me saying you can do it. Mm-hmm. Like you got this gift. You need to go out there and just, you know, what I'm saying like let everybody hear these words. And honestly, it was like therapy for me, like open mics were therapy for me. Right. Right. So like when I went up there, I'm like, yeah, this is home. Like on the mic, this is home. Mm-hmm. Like so it, it, it started to get easier. But at first I was like locked up all the Ooh, time shit. like <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah i used to wear like a hat and uh before i even like got hip to wearing a glass i used to wear a hat like brim low like mm-hmm. can't nobody see me phone in front of my face type thing and um people started giving me pointers like you need to stop like disconnected from the audience yeah. so much like try to interact with them a little more and people won't feel your words because you got a lot of like positive things to say and things that people go through mm-hmm. so yeah it was just a lot of people talking to me and yeah. um, getting me out of, like, the comfort zone that I was in. Right. So now you just, do you still get a little nervous sometimes <laughs> going up there? Oh, I'm just... always nervous. I'm just naturally a nervous, <laughs> anxiety-written person. Yeah. I feel it. So once you go up there then, pretty much, and you just start flowing, do you just lock in and not realize that people are out there at yeah. that point? Yeah. Yeah. So the shades help a lot. Like, it tints the room. Hold on. Me. Hold on. Say that one more time. What you say? <laughs> I'm trying to tell them. And the shades help a lot. Uh-huh. So, like, yeah, the room is, like, tinted. Like, I see people, but I don't really see them. Right, right. But then, like, I'll lock in with a person that I know, and then I see them, like, bumping their head or, like, giving me a thumbs up or doing something. And I'm like, yeah, I got this. Yep. So, you know, that's, like, a sense of comfort for me, like, locking in with somebody in the audience yeah. that I know. Yeah, I feel like it's all about that environment you have around you. Definitely when for it sure. comes to, you know, following your dreams and, you know, putting yourself out there. It's all about those the great ones that support you honestly yeah and it's a, it's a lot about like the energy in the room mm-hmm. and like the person that's hosting too so like if you don't got like a good host that's like hyping the room up for you and putting that positive energy mm-hmm. like it make the performance all off too because mm-hmm. like i just did um house of blues not too long ago oh, and congrats, like congrats that's good yeah the, uh this um show called raw showcase or whatever and i had to sell a certain amount of tickets to be a part of the um to be a part of the showcase or whatnot mm-hmm. And um, I felt slightly disappointed because, like, the host, I don't feel like he had control over the crowd. Like, it was mm-hmm. just a lot going on. And right. I feel like in my performance, I was screaming 
because it was so many people like below talking like mm-hmm. they couldn't hear me because like the artists are selling their art too while you doing your performance right. but i feel like they should have broke it up like <clears throat> had the artist have a time slot and like okay now your attention is directed towards the artist like i felt bad for like all of us because we like up here putting our crafts out here and these people ain't really paying attention right like, right but um it was definitely dope like to be a part and to be on house of blue stage like that's it's an honor like to touch that stage i'm like wow that was crazy but um yeah i definitely wasn't happy with that showcase (laughs) at least you got the experience for it that's how i look because i was like everybody shut the fuck up (laughs) i wanted to say something like excuse me excuse me like afterwards a couple people inboxed me like why you ain't tell everybody to shut up i'm like well as an artist like that shouldn't be like my responsibility that's like the responsibility of the host for real yeah that's you know quiet down we got these poets coming up or whatever And um, it requires your attention. So just be quiet. Yeah, like, that's true. <laughs> be respectful. Respect the mic. Like, mm. I agree, though. When somebody's up there, I mean, me personally, because I go to a lot of different performances and stuff, I'm locked in, you know? Yeah. I'm respect them because they up there, They, like you said, that's their craft. That's what they do. So. Exactly. But, you know, everybody ain't cut for the same cloth. So. No. <laughs> <laughs> it is what it is. So when was your first um, performance or, like, your first open mic? Ooh, Ooh, like two years ago. Okay. It had to be in Mayfield Heights with the Temple of Passions. Those are my people. Mm-hmm. Um, they throw a lot of like open mics and like poetry events and mm-hmm. other events as well. But um, I locked in with them and um, it was at like some kind of dance studio. Mm-hmm. And I just went like off a whim. My friend Charles was like, let's just go. Yeah. And um, I'm like, well, I ain't getting up there. I'll, I'll go. Mm-hmm. And uh, I ain't getting up there and nothing like that. And he was like, okay. He was like, we just gonna go. And um, I end up getting up there. That's dope. <laughs> yeah, cause he uh he kind of forced me to do it, but um, I'm forever in, like indebted to him too because he was always like he's always in my corner, like always pushing me, mm-hmm. whatever. And um, I think from there I went to Cleveland State and okay, I did a okay. poetry slam. Like I didn't know I was gonna be doing the poetry slam, like cause I've never done a poetry slam. I thought I was gonna be doing a open mic, but we showed up too late. Yeah. And they was like, well, the only way you are gonna get on the mic is uh to do the poetry slam i was like a poetry slam like what, what is that about like i know i'm a poet but i ain't uh-huh. never been in no poetry slam like i just started performing my g and um he was like it's, it's really easy it's free entry or whatever and you can win some money i was like money win oh, shit. Oh, okay Bet. Yeah. <laughs> i'm like you mean i can get paid for doing these words for okay real. but um yeah as a first experience i was super scared i didn't win of course because it was other people that was like more experienced than me but um it was definitely i think one of the moments I'm like, oh, I can make money off this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, and that's again, and my friend Charles was in there pushing me to do the poetry slam. So, yeah. That's good. That's good. <clears throat> that's real good. Because I bet that takes a, a lot of courage to do that. Like, all Man, right. like beyond belief courage. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like courage I didn't even think I had for real. Hey, you got it, though. You're running <laughs> with it now. Yeah. You're running with it. So, you have any any kind of poets that inspire you or any anybody, period, that inspires you? I would say Maya Angelou inspires me a lot, Mm -hmm. a lot, a lot, a lot. Like, I love her. Like, I read her stuff all the time. And, like, Mm -hmm. it was sad for me when she passed. Like, I even wrote a poem about it when she passed. I'm like, who's going to take her space for me? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But I think, too, like, not she's not really a poet, but I guess you can probably kind of say Lauryn Hill. Like, for sure. she That is, like, poetry in my eyes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she real yeah. influential to me. And I was just listening to her um, Unplugged album the other day because, like, every time I go through something, like some kind of change in my life, like, I go back and I listen to that and I get different messages from it. Mm-hmm. She's, just, she's just super dope to me. Super, super dope. Yeah, super I, inspired. I, I with Lauren Hill. I honestly just started listening to her about a year ago because <clears throat> I just started getting music not too long ago. I actually like... she Her shit is, like, poetry. The way everything flows and pieces together and she talks... She, Talks about like a lot of shit that goes on in the world, even today. Yes. Even our old music relates to things today. <laughs> That's what I mean. Yeah, it's like, like every timeless. time I go back, definitely yep. that is timeless. That's that timeless for sure. Like every time I go back, like I'm like, wow, I'm going through this now, and it's something you talked about ten years ago or something like that. Mm-hmm. Like it's crazy, but for sure, she's super inspiring to me. Um, so yeah. definitely, those those are like the top two people for me. Okay, inspiring like poetry wise. For sure. For of sure. course, there's other poets, Langston Hughes and stuff like that. Like, even when I was in high school, mm-hmm. my friend's brother used to call me Young Langston. Hey. Like, <laughs> uh, he was like, you're going to have a kid and you're going to name him Nick Langston, aren't you? I'm like, well, if I have a boy, yeah, maybe. <laughs> but, oh, um, that's a show. Yeah. Langston, yeah. That's one of my uh, faves, too. 
Oh, that's dope. I got another question for you then. If you was trapped on an island for one full year, <laughs> what three albums or mixtapes would you listen to? Ooh. <laughs> Three out. Oh, definitely Friday Night Lights by J Cole. That gotta come Everybody with me. Everybody says this because it's just. I, it's not really uh, the soundtrack to my life, but it's uh, like it's in, inspiring. It's, it's, that's real. I heard four tracks from it just two days ago, and I love you. It. Just now getting into music, you said. <laughs> Listen. I, these podcasts will help because when everybody keeps saying the same thing, I'm like, all right, let me go check it out. I, I, I like it so far. I got to finish it, though, y'all. Yeah. Man, yeah. So him, definitely. Friday Night Lights. Lauren Hill, of course. I just yep, mentioned yep, that yep. one. Um, ooh, I, I'm going to have to go with Tupac because that's my dad. So like, you can hey. give me any of any of his albums. Um, what, what's one of your top songs by Tupac? Ooh, ooh. <laughs> ooh, why you doing this to me? I'm just curious. <laughs> Man, I would say probably All Eyes on Me. Mm-hmm. Uh, Changes. Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, Dear Mama. That'd be my favorite one. <clears throat> Sorry, y'all. That'd be my favorite one, Dear Mama, I think, and um, California Love. That's, I- that's probably the first one I heard, though. I like songs that make me think mm-hmm. a lot. Like I, um, I'm always in deep thought. So I think if I'm stuck on an island, I, I want to be in deep thought. But I probably do need like some of that party, yeah. party, party yeah. movie. So oh, yeah. Man, yeah. <laughs> Speaking of deep thought, so when you write your poetry, um, do you just randomly just one day just be something you just something be in your mind and you write it, or how do you go about that? What gets you in your zone? Um, I think I'm a situational writer. Mm-hmm. A lot like things that I'm going through, um, I write about a lot. Or I observe something or a friend might tell me a story and I'm like, wow, that just like sparked a poem in my mind. Like mm-hmm. just the conversations that we have. Like I have a lot of conversations with people, like deep, deep conversations. And it always sparks like a poem in me. Mm-hmm. Like it can just be like one word you said and I'm like, I'm writing that down. Yeah, yep, yep. Because <laughs> it's going gonna, it's gonna to manifest later for sure. But, um, I like you said the word manifest. <laughs> 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 that word has been my whole summer, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> when, when you go through life and realize, you know, when you write down things like how poetry, music, whatever, you can manifest that into like reality. Oh, yeah. yeah. And I just love hearing that word. You got any favorite books you like to read? I have not read a book in a long time. I'm how, not how even going to. I'm not even going to fake because, like, I'm always so busy. So, like, I'm trying to get into audiobooks. Like, mm-hmm. I really want to read Common's book mm-hmm. because he was on, Um, I don't know if you watch Red Table Talk. Yeah, yeah. I'm <clears> with Jada Pinkett. Yeah. Man, I it's love like that. my I favorite love... like show right now. Facts. But she had, he was on there and they did an interview and they were talking about his book. And I'm just like, mm-hmm. I want to get more into Common's mind because I think like a lot of people don't respect Common. I feel like. I, I don't feel know like, why, man. I don't this know. Is... But he is so inspiring. And he's so like knowledgeable on certain things. And yeah. I want I want to read his book because I want to get that now. So I want to read his book and Jada's book, too. Like me and Charles was talking about that last night, uh, yeah. Jada's book. Um, the last book I read was Shonda Rhimes. She make uh, the show Grey's Anatomy and Scandal and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah, what, what book was it? Um, A Year to Yes. A Year to Yes. I got to put that on my yeah. phone, y'all. So, like, it's it's about her saying yes to every opportunity that comes, like, her way. Yeah. Like, she can't say no. She got to say yes because she's so used to telling people no that Mm -hmm. she wanted to start to step out of her comfort zone and just say yes to whatever you know people like came to her with like oh you want to go to this party or you want to you want to go to this country she had to say yes yeah yeah i think that's the key too man i bet that book sound good because sometimes i get caught saying no a lot or you know i'm kind of like an introvert and extrovert in a way Mm -hmm. so at times i i I barely say yes to a lot of stuff yeah yeah i realize the more you say yes the more experience you get out of life yeah you gotta be adventurous you gotta get out here because that's how you you gotta get experience and certain things like if you keep being closed-minded or closed in not saying like you closed-minded or whatever but if you keep like being in your bubble, I would say, mm-hmm. then you never going to see the world. Forever. Never going to grow it. It's yeah. just, speaking of seeing the world, I saw your video. You out there in California. <laughs> yeah. Speaking some truth. How, how was that experience out there in California? Oh, it was fantastic. Like, I was out there for four days, and I swear we did, like, stuff you probably could do in a week. Because mm-hmm. we just, like, woke up at the crack at ass dawn. Yep, yep, <laughs> like, excuse real. my French, but... Like, being from here and, like, the time zone difference, Mm -hmm. like, it didn't feel, like, no different. Like, we'd be up at 5 in the morning, but it's, like, 8 here. So, that's, like, the regular time I wake up. Yeah. So, like, we'd be up on the road, missing the traffic and just seeing a lot. Like, going to different beaches, going to see art and just 
the best part about being down there, it was free. Yep. It was free for all this experience and all this art and just going to these open mics. It was free. (laughs) <laughs> See, I never went to open mics out there. I think that's the vibe out there in Cali, though. Yeah, it's like you can always put your art on display no matter where you at. Right. Like, you just walk on the beach and, like, people got their guitars. They mm-hmm. doing their flips. They dancing. Like, it's crazy. The vibe was definitely, um, it was good. But um, I did see some weird stuff. Yeah, you you can see some weird shit in Cali. <laughs> I love you. I love Cali, but you can see some some, some abnormal stuff out it there. It was definitely <laughs> abnormal. Like it took me by surprise when dude was like, "I got blunts for five dollars." I was just like, "Oh, I forgot that was legal here." And he just gonna sell a blunt on the beach. That's cool. <laughs> Man, Kush out there is super super legal. I went out there my first time back in 2016. People were just smoking Kush. You know, up here they don't they smoke it, but it's not like out in the open. They just smoking kush and yeah. you got on the open i'm like i think what? i was like high from just being there seriously this is always in the air like you have no choice but to be high yep and be happy because <laughs> the sun's out <laughs> for real you ever see yourself living out there i could never live in cali <gasps> <no>. <laughs> why sorry. is that um it's just too busy it's too busy for me mm-hmm. um having a daughter too i don't think i could raise her out there mm-hmm. like it probably if it was just me maybe um but i probably i would definitely have a summer home there oh facts facts. like to visit <laughs> yeah or like a timeshare or something like that but i couldn't live there year round mm-hmm. like it's just too crazy it's too crazy but it's definitely one of my top places that i visited for sure okay is there yeah. any place you you like to move specifically later on um i thought it was north carolina but it ain't north carolina no <laughs> ain't no why, why no why 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 um my cousin is currently there and he is not having a good time. Oh. He said, don't do it cuz. So I'm going to go ahead and go with his advice because he's been there probably like a little over a year now. And oh, he, okay. He's like, I ain't feeling this. Yeah. <laughs> I thought it was there. So we're going to revisit that. Um, I already lived in Florida. Oh, dope. You didn't like Florida? <laughs> I, what what part of Florida you lived in? I was in South Florida. It was too darn expensive. Is that like? It's like towards Miami. I'm about to say down up. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so, like, specifically, I lived in Boynton Beach. Mm-hmm. It's, like, I guess you would call it, like, a suburb. You know how we have suburbs here, like, Cleveland Heights, University Heights. Yeah. So, it was one of, like, they suburbs. And um, it was shit-ass expensive. <laughs> like, Word. It was just too expensive. Like, the um place that we lived in, it was, like, a one-bedroom apartment. And we were playing, like, 1300 a month. Oh, shit. Yeah, it was insane. So, like, I'm, like, it's cool because, like, um place we was living in it had a basketball court it had like three pools had a tennis court like indoor billiards room like it was like down there that's normal right like you may think it's like we picked a fancy spot to live in but it's just normal like that's like all their apartments are like that Mm -hmm. like it comes with stuff like that so it's like i'm good i I don't (laughs) want to live here no more but um people were saying like if i would have moved to like northern florida Mm -hmm. or up towards like tampa and all that is more so like living here yeah yeah like the um expensiveness of it or whatever yeah they say tampa is actually a really good place for people to go like young professionals and everything Mm -hmm. that's what that's why i heard i've yet to go to tampa but i heard a lot of great things about it i ain't never been to tampa i went to orlando as a tourist oh i went to um disney how was that as an adult (laughs) disney is not fun it's not fun (laughs) Oh, oh man don't kill my dreams <laughs> <laughs> um i think it's too is who you go with too like if the person you with is not willing to do certain things mm-hmm. then it, it gets a little like why are we here yeah and i was with one of those people so yeah oh yeah <laughs> you know it's all about who you, who you travel with with stuff sometimes yeah so you, you don't know where you'll move to then <laughs> i i don't know i know i circled around the question didn't i i do that a lot like i feel like maybe you forgot i even even asked me <laughs> it's all good <laughs> i really don't know like uh-huh. um i don't know i i have no clue the where i will move yet i don't want to stay in cleveland for the rest of my life yeah for real i like chicago but it's too windy and cold like <laughs> windy city it is you know i love you know, you know you're right though i actually do love chicago yeah. but when it gets cold out there when it gets windy it's no fucking joke. <clears throat> it's no joke. Like, I go out there usually every summer, and it's during day, it feels good, but at night, you feel that wind. Woo! Yeah. Oh, who was I joking? I was joking with somebody last night. I was like, I'm about to move to Texas, because I heard Dallas is like the sugar daddy capital right now, so oh, maybe, okay, I'll go okay, to, okay. maybe I'll go to Dallas. <laughs> Get your sugar daddy out there in <laughs> maybe Dallas. Maybe I'll go to Dallas. I feel like Dallas is a good spot. I feel like right now, though, because I'm in Cleveland, I feel like Cleveland is actually on the come up. I know that may sound weird me saying that, but... 
I, I sense some kind of everybody. It's a lot of creatives out here. I it noticed is. that. And this has to be the generation that it, something shakes. Something. Something has to. It's too many people out here that's doing stuff for Cleveland not to go. It's true. I yeah. think Cleveland need to get out of their own self for real. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. There's a lot of clickiness that goes on in Cleveland, which is why I'm kind of like, I love performing, but I'm kind of like falling back on a lot of it because mm-hmm. I see too much. Mm-hmm. Like once mm-hmm. you start, I don't yeah. want to say too much. I know. I feel like <laughs> Once I feel you start it. performing and like, I'm a very observative person. Like, mm-hmm. is that a word? Mm-hmm. I you observe can, you can make a lot. Your own word. <laughs> Shit. Observative. Word. I'm observative. <laughs> Uh, my observations or whatnot, um, it just it puts me in a different like mindset. Like so I don't want I don't ever want poetry to feel like it's my job or it's like mm-hmm. something that I have to do. You know what I mean? I don't want people to be like, Oh, so when you about to do your next show? It's just like I wanna just do it. Right, right. When I want to. Right. You know what I mean? I feel like, it. I I appreciate the people that has come out and support me because it's been a lot and like it means the world to me. But like right now I'm just like in a in this space, I'm like, I don't want to perform right now. I'm just going to finish this book. By the way, working on the book. I, 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 you, I was just about to, <laughs> like, hold on, you got another book coming? <laughs> yeah. Can you give us a little sneak peek about this book? What's going to be about? Oh, yeah, for sure. So it's called um, I Just Want to Write. Uh-huh. In this book, That's I actually good. wrote through um, my college mm-hmm. years or well, when I went back to get my different career or whatnot. Um, basically, like, I wanted to write and like, school parents and um work just pulling me away from like poetry right but like i always like get these tight poems like when i'm in the awkward spot Mm -hmm. you know what i mean like i could be driving i'm like oh i got this poem in my head so what i started doing is like recording myself while i'm driving because like i get a lot of thoughts like when i'm driving so like a lot of these poems i wrote in my car (laughs) or i wrote while i was in class or i wrote you know during my lunch break on at work Mm -hmm. or something like that but um, it's just me going through life, right? For real, going through life experiences. And yeah, through relationships, breakups, stuff like that. Yeah, that's dope. It's, uh, that's it's dope. coming soon. I ain't got no release date yet, but um, hey. it's real, real soon. Probably within like the next two months. World fucking premiere. <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah. dope. I was about to ask because I see that you're a super busy person. So how do you handle being so busy, trying to write books, and you know? do poetry do all this stuff how do you manage your time <clears throat> i have no idea which is probably why i need to become an octopus for real um i think i have good time management skills mm-hmm. i think i learned that from being a manager at my job like okay you know what i'm saying with certain things um you know just making time for things that you want to make time for yeah you know what i'm saying i think a lot of people are like, well, I don't have time for that, but did you try to make time for it? Like, how important is it to you? Right. You know what I'm saying? So, I, I prioritize things. That's sure. good. That's good. I need to take some notes then because <laughs> I'm like, I'm, I'm all over that. Like you said, I naturally have this time management thing, but I feel like if I actually sit my ass down, yeah. you know, and go ske- do it and have like set up a schedule, but I hate living the schedule life. But I you do know, too. Oh, I, just, I hate it, but it's like, like it. so necessary sometimes. It is. You know what I mean? Like even it if is. you take a weekend off to do whatever you want to do, you mm-hmm. still got another weekend that you got that schedule that you need to catch up on. Yep. You know what I mean? So yep. I use my calendar a lot. I use my task manager a lot in my phone yep. to, um, to organize me for real. Dope. Dope. Yeah. I got a few quick questions to ask you <clears throat> here. What's your favorite cereal? <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy um i really don't eat cereal no more you like i have like what? so my daughter she eats cereal but not a lot but we got like honey nut cheerios the other day and like oh that was like the last cereal i ate like mm-hmm. that's probably a week ago but it's not my favorite okay. cereal because i really don't eat cereal anymore what was your favorite cereal <laughs> growing up probably cocoa pebbles cocoa you know because it turned the milk it turned the milk chocolate. <laughs> oh, it, it did. I'm gonna play. Yeah. It turned the milk. Oh, <laughs> mine, mine was fruity pebbles. That yeah, was, that, that was you my me. sister. Like hey. I always thought fruity pebbles taste weird. Whoa! <laughs> Don't come in here disrespecting the fruity pebbles. <laughs> How dare you? So that's your favorite cereal still? <laughs> yeah, I would still. I would go upstairs and eat a whole box of fruity pebbles. Uh, I'm not gonna eat a lot of. I don't eat a lot of sweet stuff like I used to, but yeah, now I do. That's probably. I mean, no, whatever. <laughs> Oh man! All right, I got I got two more questions for you. All right, what's this fried question I had? Oh, I forgot already. Or oh, what's your favorite color? Oh man, why was he just talking about this last night? Um, 
my favorite color i got favorite colors mm-hmm. um i would say black for sure green red um jamaica yeah jamaica for sure yeah um i like weird stuff too like mint green and coral mm, that's different mint green how does that is that like a a light it's real light yeah it's kind of blue. green <laughs> that's why when you said mint green squidward <laughs> yeah he kind of looked like it yeah. oh, okay bad <laughs> <laughs> it's a little darker than that but yeah okay for if, sure. if that's where you trying to go with it for sure <laughs> okay all right that's all we got <laughs> okay would you rather explore the ocean or out of or the space mm, that's deep right there that's deep i'm scared of water even though i'm a aquarius mm-hmm. like i like um the look of water i like how it's blue and all that but I would say outer space. Always wanted to visit there. You should go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have to hit up my homie Alien. Yeah, you know, Area 51 is going to get, um, you know, yeah. taken over next month, I think. See, I already own an Alien, though. Well, I don't own him, but I got a friend named Alien. Oh, my God. Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> well, 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 bet you Alien. He's a, he's a local rapper. Oh, for real? Yep. Oh, that's dope. <laughs> Shout out to Alien, then. That, that's his real name, for real? Like, is his rap name alien yeah um yeah alien i player oh shit mm-hmm. for shout out to you bro that's a unique <laughs> ass name okay for sure and last but not least what makes a great life <laughs> oh what makes a great life yeah oh, i actually have a poem about like a oh perfect go, go life. ahead you want to spit it go for it <laughs> whatever right. you want to do we can do that that's cool let's see i ain't got to memorize or nothing like that that's but um i can definitely pull it up yeah i actually did this poem at um lake erie college with a cu- this is like a group piece, but I'm going to just do my part. <clears throat> so you asked about a perfect life. Mm. Yep, yep. These perfectly placed puzzle pieces around me. They are also perfectly connected, but still scattered. It's up to me to figure out what fits so perfectly with me. I had a vision when I was a little girl about a perfect life. I since then lost sight of that. Because as I grew older, I found out perfect doesn't exist. My perfect husband, I haven't found anyone that fits that description. My perfect house in this market costs too much money. My perfect career to walk little to to work little to none doesn't exist. I mean, maybe in a perfect system, but I think we all can be in agreement that a perfect life is all of what you make it. My little girl, she's perfect to me. I made her and raised her to be strong, smart, and confident. We aren't done yet. She is walking greatness, a reflection of me, so I'll make sure she's as perfect as can be. My perfect world doesn't consist of materialistic things. I fiend for pure love, not tarnished and conditioned only on the premise that we created something, so we have to be together. No, that doesn't sit well with me. Love me purely because you want to. Love me purely because how I make you feel. I fiend for respect. In this current day and age, people with my skin color are darker don't get that. It's hard just to walk down the street without police trolling little black boys. It's hard to turn on the TV and hear about another killing. I'm sick of it. So how am I supposed to describe a perfect world that probably would never exist? I can't. To you, what I have is not perfect, but to me, I'm building on it. My own utopia. Mm. (laughs) Mmm. The snapping going on that. I I love that. I love that. Thank you. That was dope. You just made that not too long ago? or? Um, No, we performed that at Lake Erie College. Um, Oh, yeah, you just said. Yeah, yeah, well, it was like four or five of us, T.O.P. Collective, and um, they had us come there, and it was like, um, I think it was for Black History Month, or maybe it was for Women History Month or something like that. Yeah, yeah. But they had us come there and perform, and uh, we did it as a group piece. That's dope. I like that. I actually felt that. That's what I like about poetry. (laughs) Definitely people speak it. I I like when they speak it. I can feel it. You know what I mean? (laughs) Sure, if I can you. feel it, it's authentic. I, I fuck with that. Definitely, I appreciate though. it for sure. So where can everybody find you at social media? You know, whatever you got out there. Um, I mainly use IG. You can follow me, Lady Poet. It's spelled very differently. Don't let it hurt your eyes. But it's L A D E E P O three T. And um, Facebook. I mean, sometimes I'll be on there. It's the same thing. Officially, Lady Poet. That's about it for real. For sure. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show today, telling us your story and your great poetry. Looking for, <laughs> we're you. looking forward to the book coming soon. All right. For <laughs> Appreciate show. it. Thanks for having me on the show. No problem. No problem. Well, ladies, gentlemen, boys, girls, thank you for watching our Let's Lavish Journey podcast, where we create, inspire, and spread greatness. We out of here.
can't post with a picture. I'm just gonna screenshot it. I'm gonna switch up the pose this time. <laughs> we good. <All> right. <laughs>